Welcome to a brand new episode of Not Too Deep. I'm Grace Helbig. This is a very scary, exciting episode because we have Nick Hamilton, the bully from It and It Too. And turns out he is really good at acting because he's a goddamn sweetheart. We talk all about the making of those films. We talk about Australia because guess what? He's Australian. He was acting with the American accent, you guys. He's better than all of us. And he's got a really cute dog. We talk all about it on this episode of Not Too Deep with Nick Hamilton. Not, not, not too deep. Turn those great ideas into reality with Squarespace. They make it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. They have beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything so you can easily make a beautiful website all by yourself but if you do get stuck they have a 24 7 award-winning customer support that's there to help you out so head to squarespace.com grace for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use the offer code grace to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain <laughs> Nick, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Nicholas, Nick, which do you prefer? Oh, Nick. My mom calls me Nicholas. Your mom calls it? Yeah. She's formal? Yeah, she's formal. You're she's Aus- foreign and Australian formal. Australian yeah. mom? Mama, my, my Australian. M-U-M. Not Your mom. M-O-M. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah you're, so you're from Australia. Yes. Your whole family's back there. Yes. Do they come overseas here? My mom does a lot. A lot? Uh, she comes, she tries to come almost every, like, three months, which is... From the, other side of, from the other side of the world, that's a lot. Yeah, so she never adjusts to like any time zone. No, not at all. Because <laughs> she's always on like holidays and stuff too. So she's just constantly what? around the world. I don't know. What is her life? Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I want that. Whatever yeah. she's got going. But she came She came for the It 2 premiere, which was two weeks ago. And she's already talking about coming end of next month. Oh, really? She's like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of bum, but it's great. It's Okay, so let's jump into It. Oh, great. Okay, I haven't seen It 2. Oh. Um, I'm very sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Um, uh, because seeing it one was a lot for right. me. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. had to be very high and very coaxed <laughs> by Elliot Morgan to watch this yeah, movie. Elliot told me you hated it. I hate. I get scared <laughs> at like literally. If right. I we have this painting of this bumble baby. If I look at it, oh my god. Yeah. See, if I look at that without remembering that no, it's there, terrifying. I'm terrified. Yeah, so that's terrifying. like <laughs> that level of immediate fear doesn't really work right. out for those kinds of movies. Mm-hmm. But I gave him the benefit of the doubt. It was great. I just didn't sleep for the rest of the Which night. Which is fair. And, and neither did I, so that's fine. Oh, there, yeah. yeah. So, okay, let's talk about how this started. Mm-hmm. You, um, well, you've been acting for years now. Yeah, I started when I was 11. You so started I'm acting in now. So, wow, yeah. okay. And you were starting acting in Australia or you came yeah. to the US? Yeah, so I started, I did like a school play when I was Yeah, 11, I think in our notes 11. we have that you were Elvis in I was, a school Yeah, Elvis, <laughs> an Elvis impersonator, yeah, which is great research. So I tried to tell no one that. That's, oh. Did you do actual research for it? Yeah, no, no, God, no. No, I was 11 and I didn't give a shit. I, um, <laughs> but also you're like, this is what I think Elvis would do. Right, exactly. That's, That's what I was, because I played an Elvis impersonator in a talent show in a musical so it was a bit yeah wow so, so many layers so many layers <laughs> but like i jumped off i i hesitatedly i hesitated when i was auditioning because i was just like oh, it's, it's lame yeah but i auditioned i auditioned, auditioned for the part with the least lines and they gave me elvis <laughs> yeah. um which was like it's at least lines but you also have to sing a full song so full i played did a full lip syncing to uh another guy singing an elvis <laughs> Not even an Elvis song. It was like Jesus is my, a friend of mine or something like that. So you're just a warm body, basically. Basically, yeah. On what I am. <laughs> Pretending to play the guitar with my two bodies by the side. <laughs> but then I, I, I like I jumped off the stage at some point and like high five the audience. Uh-huh. It was I, it was completely unplanned and I just like fell in love with that. So I um yeah I joined a, an Australian agent okay. near where I live. Um and yeah I got a few jobs with her, short films. Got my first TV role uh, of her. And one of the short films I did, uh, I managed to somehow win a, an award for it. And that's cool. um, my bigger agent that I have now in Australia recognized so, that. So you didn't do like any training really? Kind of a little bit. We did, did some workshops, but it was mainly kind of just jumping into it. My first audition was for a um, a spinoff of H2O Just Add Water, which is like a, <laughs> ma- a mermaid show back in Australia, which okay. is, you know, um, the vine uh, is like where they're like a... Uh, Clear. Yeah. That's that's from that. Oh. So it's from that show. And that's we did a spin-off of that called um 
Mako Mermaids. Sure. And I was in one of the episodes <laughs> of that, and that was my first uh, first ever audition, and I managed to get it. Wow. So it's just kind of it went from there, and uh, yeah, I did a little bit of training, but not much. Okay. So then when do you come to the U.S.? Uh, that was after, so I got uh, my first film with my bigger agent, um, my first American film with her, got some U.S. reps, mm -hmm. got a couple jobs, one of them being It One. And yeah, then, um, but that you can't just drop that like that's a casual like <laughs> thing that happens for everyone that has a fantasy of moving to Hollywood. Right? <laughs> like, no, I was I've been very 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 lucky. So like that's what, how it works. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> the audition process for it. Uh huh. Uh, auditioning in and of itself sucks. No, I hate it. Yeah, yeah it's, the worst. It. yeah it's the worst. I, if I met anyone that loved it, I'd be like, "You're a psychopath." You're insane. Yeah. yeah. No, not at all. The what's the audition process like? Well, this one there wasn't really. It was one audition. Okay. And it was a self tape. That I sent in, I was visiting my brother who was living in the UK at the time. Uh huh. And we just landed in London and we uh, were in this like airport hotel. We were jet lagged. And I got this email when I was like waking up at 3 a.m. that local time uh -huh. saying that um, I had to do like an urgent audition for a Stephen King picture. Yeah. Uh, and Is so this I, a, I saw, or a casual headline. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so I did, I did, I was pissed about it because I was so tired and jet lagged. And mm -hmm. so I, set up a, a, my iPhone on top of two suitcases on top of a desk in this hotel. Yeah, that's how I make all of my YouTube yeah, videos. Right? <laughs> yeah, That's how you do it. Yeah. The only way to do it. Um, but then, yeah, I did like two takes and sent both of them off because I couldn't be bothered to pick which one. Sure. And uh, I said, I'm going back to sleep and did that holiday and got back home and I was unpacking and got the role. That's which is just that yeah, never happens. Like never that. happens. Which that's is so nuts. Just shows how much, I mean, Andy, the director, he's a, he's a, visionary and he's yeah. a genius he can see what's going to happen because i i watched that audition literally yesterday yeah i watched it back and i was just like that's a shit audition <laughs> it's like how did you pick me from that mate that's i mean i thank you very much but you're insane now you need <laughs> to like just wake up at 3 a.m for all of your auditions now because right. maybe that tired energy they saw be, something right? in you yeah i don't know but that's so did you have any familiarity with it before? Not really. No, I mean, I was, I'd auditioned for a couple Stephen King projects beforehand. Like they were doing like a uh, Stand By Me remake or something and that never got made. Okay. But so it was always kind of like, so they were trying to do a lot of Stephen King stuff around that. And, and I'd just done the the Dark Tower, which is another mm -hmm. Stephen King property. So I'd just done a small role in that after not getting the lead. Okay. Uh, and then I, I got back and managed to get it. So it was like, it was kind of, I was on my radar, but it was never really something I was ever really interested in because I hate horror movies. I hate, really? I hate scary things. Do you? Yeah, I'm a wuss. So, okay. Well, let's talk about that then. <laughs> okay. So we can relate on that. But right. uh, so how do you, you're going in, you're playing, your role is like very emotionally intense. Right. So how you, how do you prep for that? Is punching pillows in a I hotel so. room just to warm up? <laughs> no, I, don't, I honestly don't know. It's like kind of when you're, preparing for something like that you just kind of have to hope it's inside of you yeah when you have to play just a psychopath who is unrelenting and and doesn't do anything good yeah and you get yeah i mean you get to, it's fun I, I think it's funner than being able to play the, the good guy because you get to do you get to overact and True, that's, that's called good acting yeah which is great <laughs> well that's like, what i was gonna say i i know you now and like you're a very nice human being I appreciate that. so you are truly acting right. in this so it must feel like this is not really me but right. i'm lock like tapping into something you know very yeah. visceral yeah i don't know what it, i think everyone has a, must have a, like a little bit of something like that inside them i don't know if it's yeah. easier for people who are are actually dicks in real life. Yeah. But yeah, I know for some reason it just came natural for me to be able to just like cackle and, <laughs> and go like, nuts on screen. I was just a... like, this probably isn't a good thing, yeah. but I'm doing it. <laughs> I can access this really easily. Right. <laughs> uh, should I be concerned for right. my uh, emotional growth? Uh, no, I'm listening to a podcast about the Zodiac Killer. So it's like the oh, same right. thing. Yeah, it's you know? fair. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> everyone has that little bit of, I'm sure if I put you in front of a camera and said, Good, just go nuts, you'd be able to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah probably. <laughs> if you told me uh, the whole Real Housewives franchise has been canceled indefinitely, I think nuts. I could access that Oh, part great. Perfect. My... <laughs> Everyone needs that little thing in their brain. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how is shooting then? You're going on set, you're mm -hmm. meeting everyone, everyone's of, of the same age group, right. um, which must be very cool and also like intimidating that you guys mm. all have to take on this like huge endeavor. Yeah, well, I mean, everyone on, I mean, it helped that the set, especially the first movie set, was just phenomenal. And everyone was, we shot in Toronto, so everyone's Canadian. Oh, cool. And lovely. And yeah. it's very, very nice. Very um, pleasant. But even all the, all the kids, just like, we became best friends right away. And mm -hmm. they're just very stand-up guys, and they've continued to be that way, even through all this 
sort of fame overnight, all the kids. It was it's cool to be kind of an outsider to that to watch. I mean, I have a mullet in in, in the right. movie, so it's kind of no one really kind of sees me as that. Right. But those seven kids, that's their life. That's kind of they're that now. They can branch off. Yeah. But they'll be known as that person from it. You yeah. Know? Um, and so it was really cool to, I mean, it's the same thing. We saw um, uh, Finn, the first season of Stranger Things came out while we were filming it. Oh, yeah. So he was no one and then everyone overnight. And then literally overnight. Crazy. So, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with the kids, though. Was, as soon as the movie came out in theaters, it was just hanging out with them just became kind of a, a lot. But yeah. throughout that, they've maintained the same dignity and uh, humility that they had from the beginning, which is awesome. That's, That's so rare, especially in child actors. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. So is the mullet real? No, mullet's fake. Okay. Yeah, I oh, wanted movie to keep magic. It. Yeah, exactly. It's a piece. So Andy, the director, well, from the beginnings of the mullet, I'd like to, I'd like to say that the mullet- That's a great name for a movie, the by the way, the from the, the beginnings of the mullet. <laughs> it's my bio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But I, I'd like to I'd, I'd like to think that the mullet is my idea. Oh yeah, because I came, I, I walk I was walking around set, and I heard some guys I think it was in the prosthetics trailer talking about um, what they were going to do with my hair, and I was just like, oh yeah, I heard they're going to put a mullet on you. I was like, oh, I had no idea. That sounds like a great idea. Uh huh. So I went to uh, the hair trailer. I was just like, so I heard you're putting a mullet on me. And they said, we haven't heard anything about this, but that's a great idea. <laughs> so you're so manifesting a, this exactly, now. <laughs> I guess so, right? Because I, I looked at um, photos of the stuff that we'd done before the mullet and it's nowhere near as crazy. So it, yeah. it worked it perfectly. So it's um, this little piece? It's like a little piece. So I had, I had very long hair for uh -huh. me um, and it's just like it, it clicks onto the back of my head basically. It was like little... It hurt like all hell. Sure. There's a scene in the um, second one, which I'm sure I can talk about. Uh, it's like a little shot where I come out of I come out of some water, uh -huh. and I'm like my head's back, and so the wig was basically dangling in the in the water. <laughs> so I was just kind of like snapping off and like ripping parts of my scalp off my head when I was jumping up and screaming. So I just I had to like get up and like scream. Beauty is pain. The beauty is pain, and yeah. I was screaming for real. Oh. So that was fun. As someone that's had hair extensions many times in my life, yeah, it's pointless uh, me talking to someone who does this all the time and saying, "Oh, it hurts so much." I did it for three months. No, but you got paid to wear that piece. <laughs> so. Exactly. That's I too. paid to wear those mm -hmm. pieces. Right. Uh, no, that's so. So you're going and you're making this movie. You're wearing your hairpiece. You're doing all this. And then, how long was it from wrapping to the movie coming out? Uh, we wrapped about, I'd say, probably a year before the movie came out. And so you're just sitting now on this Basically, thing, wondering yeah. like, will this come out, and how will it be received? Like, when it first came out, did you? Was it shocking? Was it like, holy shit? Like yeah. I mean, I think we always thought we gauged. I went to a, a, a party in LA mm -hmm. during the filming of It and I got asked on the on the carpet about It. And that was yeah. the first time I'd been on a movie where people actually gave a shit about it before it came out. Yeah. So that was cool to me. That was just like, oh, people actually care about this. And there was a few like Facebook fan pages that popped up before the movie and Instagram fan pages that popped up before the movie came out. So we kind of knew that people were going to see it, right. but it came out and it was you can't prep 123 million domestic opening, uh, which is the biggest opening for an R-rated horror movie. Whatever I don't, how does, do you even process Which that? is just, you can't, you yeah. can't process that at all. That's it's, insane. It's us and all the kids, as I said, all the kids just went bonkers overnight. <laughs> yeah, just, it was like sure. 200 to 300K <laughs> followers overnight. It's Real, just yeah. Like, it's just like, that's. So how do you handle that then? Like now, because you, uh. It's very cool that all we have like these Venn diagrams of like friends and people that we're into that cross over that like you've been like a, you know, Rhett and Link fan and mm -hmm. you've watched Internet and like the Valley Folk and all those guys right. like the so you're seeing and watching all these people on the Internet. Then all of a sudden, like now you're in it. That's the very cool part of my job is that's to be in a movie, especially not have it a huge part in a very big movie. Yeah. Is that sure you don't get all the. um the huge one to two million followers, which is, I don't want that. That's a lot. Yeah. It's like, it's just, you get all the, the things that you've wanted over, over your life. I yeah. got to be on Good Mythical Morning, which is insane. Yeah, I got to, that? which <laughs> is just so cool. Like I grew up watching those guys, literally. Aren't they in person? They look exactly yes, like they, they do. and they act exactly like they yeah, do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they're the exact same people. I'm always like, every time I've uh, been around them, I'm always waiting for like the facade to come down like, for no. them to like be really who they right. are. And they're exactly they're the as exact they are. same people. Yeah. It's the same thing too with like as when if you watch good mythical morning the crew is like the cast also yeah so even getting to like the the producers introduced me to Rhett and link i was just like this is not life anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
what is happening to me? <laughs> I'm in this playhouse right, right now exactly. that I've only seen through a screen, right. and it's so strange. But yeah, even like meeting uh, Steve, Steve Zaragoza. Yeah, at, is that how you got into like hanging all, with all the Valley folks? All of that was through Steve, through Finn, really. So Finn oh, was yeah. a, a source fed fan. Yeah. And then uh, he met. Um, Steve, just because he's Finn Wolfhard. Also, like Steve Zaragoza is like a very bizarre conduit to so many different people in the universe. He knows everyone. It blows my mind that he so is much. like the link between so many mm. random groups of people, exactly. types of people. Yeah, yeah. But that's so Finn met him, and then uh, at the it one premiere, okay, um, he introduced me to Steve because Steve came. Yeah, and then yeah, just throughout that, I mean, we while we were shooting it too uh, in September of last year, he. And the rest of the Valley Folk came to Toronto for like an event. So we all hung out then. That's how I met the Valley Folk. And I've been very good friends with those guys ever since. And it's just gone. That's connected me to weird sort of internet routes that I've been. I mean, I've, I used to fall asleep to Not Too Deep, which is just. Uh, And now you're here. Right. Which is just, yeah. I I keep (laughs) saying to all my friends, it's just like, this isn't real. It's all very strange. None of this is just, it's insane. But that's the cool thing. Like hearing that you like get thrust into this like weird limelight situation like internet's so fucking weird uh-huh. and that you get thrust into it overnight but you're still like a very grounded like it's a testament to all of your guys's characters and i'm sure you guys right. fuck with each other keep each other grounded 100%. like give each other perspective on things like especially like when did you guys find out that the second one was happening uh we kind of always knew there was always uh we'd sign an option at the start of the first movie that okay. we were going to do the second one um because there's, there's two of chapters of as either when if it if the movie didn't make enough money we wouldn't do it right but, as soon as we realized that there was hype around the first one, we were just like, oh, we'll come back. Here for... we go. So it was always like, because it was the same crew for the majority of the same crew for the f- for the second movie. That's nice. So we left the first movie. It's like, oh, this is sad, but I'll see you in two years. Yeah. Right? So uh, cool. And then you get to see everyone grow up. Yeah, it was crazy. Did anyone have weird puberty? I'm um, sure. Uh, Jack, <laughs> Jack, uh, Dylan Grazer, who was, I think they were like, it would have been 12, 13 when they first shot it. Yeah. He's 15, 16 now. And he's, uh, his voice has dropped seven octaves. <laughs> And he's just, he's like crazy tall. It's just, there's a lot of, I mean, Finn. Finn, yeah. Finn has really grown. But yeah, I mean, it's cool to see all of them not only grow in that sense, but just grow as human beings and only, I mean, you'd expect Finn out of all of them to be the most self-centered. Sure. And he's just not even close to it. Yeah. There's just, none of them have even an ounce of that in them, which is astonishing to me. That's very cool. Yeah, but I mean, it's a testament to everyone around us too, like all their families and parents and yeah. guess their mums and dads have been around with them from the start of uh, the first one. My mum and dad have been around for the start of the first one. So yeah. it's... Good foundations. Exactly. You guys got good foundations. Yeah, exactly. Do you guys goofs and spoofs on set? You guys pranking each other? Not really feels... on set. I mean, it was just it's a lot, we have a group chat still now. I was going to um, ask that too. On Instagram and Snapchat, uh, that's just it's just it's garbage. And <laughs> I love it so much. It's just trash. This is You're like if anyone nonsense. got a hand, a hold of this, no, absolutely. this would be very terrible. For was, all I think, us. I think uh, like Jack got hacked or something, and we were just like, we need to delete this like right now. <laughs> yeah. This you, is horrendous. You guys, like, we all have like our doomsday plan. Like, right. you guys need your doomsday plan for when inevitably to... someone hacks into that chat. Right. No, I think we deleted it once, and then because it was just like, it's just, it was like, oh, okay, no crazy stuff in this one, but right. it's just nonsense. <laughs> Absolute nonsense. Those guys can't speak a full sentence without it's, going crazy. <laughs> it's your own little Reddit thread. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh, that's so great. Okay, where's the dog? Oh, the dog is at home currently. She, I left her with the uh, with the, the cleaner back and home. How long have you had? What, what's her name? Nala? Her name's Nala. Nala, okay. Yeah. Uh, what type of dog? She looks like a cute little scrunchy thing. She's a little, little loaf of bread. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but she's, she's not a corgi, right? No, she's a, um, she's a Pomeranian cross... I think it's a Papillon, Papillon, Pomeranian. She's, she's a little, she like a little terrier cross Pomeranian. And yeah, she's, she's got like a little a, snout. She like looks like a fox. I love her more than most people <laughs> in this world. All people, I'd probably say. I get that. Yeah. Uh, so, how long have you had her? I've had her just after my birthday, which is probably three months, maybe okay. four months. Oh, so she's like a new little baby. She's a new little baby, but she was four and a bit when I got her. Okay. Um, she was, uh, yeah, I adopted her from um, a place called Vanderbump, Vanderpump. Yeah, and, uh, I saw that. Yeah. Look, as someone that watches All the Real Housewives and Vanderpump Rules, when I saw that you tagged that as your location yeah. with like, welcome to my new baby, I was like, I literally wrote down, from Vanderpump Dogs? <laughs> <laughs> like, in my notes. Right. <laughs> Wait, so how, what, ta- how did this happen? Well, it was just, it's it's a great place in, um, it's uh, in West Hollywood. It's in Wigo, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, you just, it's a big pink building because yeah. of course it is. Can't miss it, and I love it so much. I went. I still I, haven't been there. I've only you need seen. To go. It's yeah. great because they have the like little tiniest 
fluffs. Oh it's God, great. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I went there. I was I went there a couple times with friends mm-hmm. just to see dogs because I didn't have a dog. I was just like, I want to see oh, dogs. It's a, it's better than therapy. Exactly. It is. <laughs> um, but then I went sometime. I think it was like a week after my birthday um, with one of my friends and. Nala was kind of just there. I was just like, I came to see dogs. Uh-huh. And Nala was there and she was she was named Zoe at that point. Okay. Um, she was sort of looking at me and uh, I patted her and, and left. And there was this mother and daughter behind me who went basically in line to chat to Nala. Uh-huh. But Nala kept looking at me. Oh. And I, I nearly oh. bawled my eyes out. Oh, I was, no. I turned to my friend. I was just like, so I'm getting this dog now. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't, can't leave. Not, I can't not. Yeah. And, I mean, my building is... Everyone has a dog. Yeah. So it's great. Oh, that's so, so great. Yeah, no, she's the best dog. But when dog that in connection forms, it's undeniable. She's the best dog in the world. Because that's, I think she was abused, like from with her okay. old uh, parents, which is insane. Because I mean, one, she's cute how as can heck. You? But with that cute of a dog, and she has, it's like she knows how to sit already. She's potty trained. Like, wow. it's just like, how could you hate that dog? Yeah. What are you doing? She's doing everything perfectly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's she's being... the best dog in the world. What are you yeah. doing? Yeah. No, oh, well, that's dog. so great. Well, okay. You will have to come back and then you will bring Nala. I'll bring Nala. She'll next be time. a guest. I should have brought her. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> and we, I mean, it's, I, I would get distracted. Right, this would be course. a two hour podcast with just She'd an just hour of me right petting. There, which is great. Oh, God. <laughs> I love it. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, I have more questions okay. for you. We'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Support for today's show comes from our dear friends over at Squarespace. Turn your dream into a reality with Squarespace. They make it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Are you looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, or more? Squarespace is the tool for you. They have beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks so you can easily make a beautiful website all by yourself. Plus, their powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online Online, and they have analytics that help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box, so there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple, and you'll get the help that you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people, from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms, to turn great ideas into something real. So head to squarespace.com grace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash grace. Offer code grace. We're back uh, with more Not Too Deep, as you probably already showed, should know at this point. <laughs> um, okay, so chapter two, uh, how is the filming different, if at all? Is it just you guys all kind of know, you're excited, there's like momentum, there's like... Yeah, I mean... The is main... there more pressure? Yes, 100%. Yeah. I mean, there's more... I mean, there was more adults on set. It was more. Yeah. It was a completely different cast, basically. Right. So it was like, still had all the kids, and they were there a lot. Um, I only filmed like three days, but I was in Toronto for probably four or five weeks in total. Oh wow! Um, just because of how my shooting shooting dates were spread sure. out. Sure. It was cool. I got to be there every day and see Bill Hader be hilarious oh my every God. single second. I can't imagine. Um, it's just so great, and uh, like seeing my older counterpart uh go crazy, yeah. and I mean all the kids do their same characters that everyone loves now. It's really cool. It's really cool to see. But That's very um, exciting. it was very casual. But I think it was there. There was kind of just a a general knowledge that we have to get this one right. Yeah. Because the first one there was there was pressure, but it was like if we don't get it right. Some people will see it, and then it will kind of just fade off into into, right. into existence. But then but this one now, there's expectation. Everyone will see this one, whether it's good or bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like, oh, we have to make this good, and we did. But that's awesome. So they in did. in real life, do people come up to you and treat you as if they believe that you are truly a bully? That's the funny thing. I've, I've always noticed. I mean, I'm not recognized much, but whenever I am, it's always that kind of trepidation. Of like, people are like, a little um, scared of you. As, um, <laughs> Uh, can I can I get a photo? Fu- it's fine if you don't want it, but I, I kind of want- can I get a photo, please? <laughs> it's like it's alright. I'm not going to stab you. I'll stab other people instead. Oh, that's very yeah. that's sweet, and also like you can I'm sure feel people like noticing you and being like at a distance. A lot like, of people do. That, a lot uh... of this, all my friends because I never notice it, but it's all all my family and friends. Whenever I'm around them, they go like in a shopping center. And yeah, they're, they're always like, "Do you notice that a girl looking at you and being too scared to go towards you?" I was like, "I didn't." Because like, whenever I because if I saw it, I'd go up to them and say, you know, yeah, uh, hi. please don't be scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> we just want people with like any 19 year old boy should be doing to girls in the mall going, please don't be scared of me. 
<laughs> that should be the opening line of every child, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. every man ever. Uh, <laughs> God, I know, but that must be so fun and funny to be like, I truly am a nice person. Like, Please, I, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a nice person. Please I, like me. How has it been now? You're going, you're doing these premieres. You're going to like <laughs> award shows. You're doing shit like that. Like, have you come into? Have you met anyone that's like you're fangirling out about? It's all the internet people. I was always that kid when I was from probably 10, 10 years old onwards. It was always YouTube. I would always watch mm. YouTube every afternoon after school, every night just wow. to fall asleep. So it was always, I mean, Rhett and Link was a huge one, obviously. Um, God, who else have I met? But it's just, it's all, like I was at the the SAG Awards in 2017 mm -hmm. um, for another movie I did. And I met Meryl Streep and that was awesome. <sighs> That's nuts. But for some reason, I was way more starstruck by, like, Steve, <laughs> which is great. Some say that Steve is the Meryl Streep of YouTube. Yeah, yeah, people say that. You know? Yeah, people say that all the time. He's very versatile. <laughs> he <Yeah>. truly is. <laughs> he never looks the same. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, so do you still watch YouTube now? Mm. Okay, who do you keep up with? Give me some recommendations. Oh, God. Uh, I watch a lot of – I still watch Good Mythical Morning every morning. Yeah, they're great. Um, I watch a lot of Valley Folk stuff. That was just uh, – I watch a lot of um, visual podcasts, like just oh. like, I mean, I listen to a lot of pub podcasts to fall asleep and on road trips and stuff, but yeah. it's a lot of the time I'll just put like an hour long podcast on my YouTube and just kind of sit on my phone and watch that sort of absentmindedly. Sweet. Um, stuff like this, stuff like dy dynamic banter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Have you, have you met the Mike Falzone? I have met the Mike Falzone. Uh, yeah, the Jesus awesome. that walks amongst he us. He is the Jesus, <laughs> the homeless Jesus. Yeah. Um, oh, I want to bottle his laughter and just so spray it on me like perfume That's, every day. Him and Steve just together are a perfect duo. Yeah. That's why I love Dynamic. I was uh, on a road trip to Utah recently and has put on like 10 episodes of Dynamic Banter and just uh, cracked up the whole way. They're so silly. So funny they're, and so clever and yeah. just ingenious boys. Truly dynamic banter. Nice. Um, well, okay, let's say you had to win a fight for $10 million. Who do you think you'd have a better chance against? Steve Zaragoza, Elliot Morgan, Mike Falzone. Oh, shit. I was gonna, if it was going to be Steve and, and, and Mike, I'd say Steve because Steve wouldn't want to hurt me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's He's true. like, you can have the money, it's, buddy. It's yours. It's yours. You deserve <laughs> I feel like Elliot would do that too, but I feel like if El if that was up for Elliot, he would for some reason go into like a fighting stance. It's like, bro, I have to do this. <laughs> I'm just going to go for it. He'd try to do some psychoanalysis to, to like talk his way out right. of why you should give him the money without fighting him for so it. So we can stand here and we can just kind of time it out. Yeah, or we can stand here and showcase all of our deep-seated daddy issues if you want to. <laughs> be like a full deep dive. <laughs> Right. Whereas Mike Falzone, I feel like, would actually put up a very no, strong 100%. fight. No, 100%. I would <laughs> yeah. never go Mike and I feel like Mike is so Massachusetts that he Right. I think if any of them actually genuinely fought me, I wouldn't be able to win. <laughs> yeah. But I think Steve would just kind of refuse to fight me, so I'd pick Steve. Yeah, okay. That's. I think I would do the same. Right. Um, okay, so you can sing. Hmm. I, I, I hold a You tune. dabble. I dabble. So <laughs> are there any, like, musicals you'd want to be a part of? Oh, that's a good question. Um... Are you interested in that world at I, all? I never really, especially with this whole you know live musical situation right. that happens all the time now. Well, I mean, I mean, obviously, I think uh, Hugh Jackman is a huge kind of pave the way for the Australians that. that can sing. Exactly, it's the sing dance. I can do everything but dance. I think. Well, you not everything. That's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> you can speak Chinese. I can, okay. do, <laughs> I can do a tiny amount of things, and one of the and one of the things that I can't do is dance. <laughs> A large amount Had, of so you're not going to be on the next season of Dancing with the Stars? Uh, no, okay. no, I would I would humiliate myself and everyone that is related to me. You know, it's always good to realize our boundaries. Yeah, our limits. you have to know. Yeah, you have to know. But um, I mean, I don't really watch a lot of uh, Broadway stuff. I went and saw uh, Come From Away. Have you seen that? Nope. So great. It's what is about it? um, the people in Newfoundland. I think you can pronounce it pronounce it correctly. Um, sure. But this is a very factual based Newf podcast. Newfoundland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's about those people who, uh, after 9-11, they brought down a lot of planes from the skies and they had to take emergency landings in crazy right. spots. So Newfoundland was like, there was a town in Newfoundland that had like population 100. Mm -hmm. And overnight, because of 9-11, that day, they had like 10,000. Oh, wow. Because all the planes had to land yeah. there. 
Um, so that was really cool. Like it was just it's like a very funny musical about how these people in Newfoundland with these funny accents. Oh, okay. So it's lighthearted. Yeah, it's lighthearted. Okay. Yeah, no, hundred <laughs> percent. It's very, very funny and very. Uh, but yeah, it's it's all very it's very diverse because everyone from around the world landing in Newfoundland of this like. God, they're like we have one, we live here because we don't want people yeah, exactly. like come here. So ten thousand people, but yeah, it's very funny. I saw that very recently, but um, yeah, I don't really watch many. I mean, Dear Evan Hansen would kind of suit me, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. They do like a do like a Love Simon musical. That's me. There you go. There you go. Done. Put it manifest. I'm gonna it. put it into put the world. Put it into the universe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Danger Close. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this. Uh, Danger Close is uh, an Australian movie that I did. Yeah. Uh, recently, that came out. Uh, in August in Australia, coming out November eighth here. Cool. On uh, in theaters, on digital, on DVD, okay, on VHS. I'm sure. Yeah, I get it where you can get, get it. it, where you can get it. <laughs> uh, but it's a, it's about the only prominent Australian battle in the Vietnam War. Okay. Um, that like the like the, the, the most prominent. Um, where a hundred Australian guys aged like nineteen to twenty two went up against an estimated force of about I think it's. 10,000? Wow. Or like 2,000 maybe. I don't know. Okay. Something in the thousands. Just the odds were not in their favor. No, God, yeah. no. And uh, it's the story of that battle and uh, the the bonds between those boys. And I, I play um, play Private Noel Grimes, who's still alive today, which is quite... Whoa. That was a bit of a uh, pressure. Wow, but, um, yeah. Did you did you talk to him? No, he lives in New Zealand. Okay. So um, there was a lot of the boys who we actually play in the movie who came to set who were still alive because it only happened in the 60s. Wow. Or whenever the Vietnam War was. Um, so it was very like that's all the boys that came to set were very it's like oh I remember this happening wow it's insane but yeah that's so it's, very intense uh, but yeah Grimesy couldn't come couldn't couldn't make it but um, there's pl plenty of photos of like what he did and he was apparently just a scoundrel and mm -hmm. uh, but yeah it was a, it was a fun shoot it was all it was like ten hour days filled with mud and fake rain and uh, in your full sort of army gear and it yeah. was it was good fun it was just a ton of like twenty main cast uh, tw like blokes just. We'd do the ten hour shoot and then go shower and have a three beers. <laughs> oh yeah, because you're, you're in Australia, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, we filmed it in the Gold Coast in Australia. So then, then five a.m. we'd wake up and go do it again. So gee, it was I mean, great. That sounds actually like a very cool experience. It's a very very fun time. At the at that time, we were like, like oh, five a.m. Yeah, and get cold rain. Sure. And fake and having to because we didn't have any blanks in the guns. So we'd just be kind of just moving our arms. Oh, really? <laughs> so it's just like killing just, your whole Oh, ass. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, and every time we did it, we were just like, we'd start complaining then realize that what actually happened. Uh-huh. It's just like, we can't complain yeah. about what we're doing. Yeah. We're, we're, not, we're not being shot at. This is not real war <laughs> no. that we're uh, engaging no, in so right now. So we can't now. complain. But yeah, it was a great, great experience. Just filled with a lot of lovely boys who live here too in LA. Oh, cool. So it's just, yeah, all the boys keep in contact with. What do you miss the most about Australia? Um, probably the people. I mean, it's yeah. the people that I know. You guys are very nice. We're very nice people, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's, I live in a very, I used to live in a very, very pretty part of the world called Byron Bay. Yeah. Which is right on the, on the beach, basically mm -hmm. on the, on the uh, East coast um, of Australia. And it's just, just beaches and green and blue everywhere. And oh, it's stunning. So just picturesque. And, and you take that for granted until you move out here and you're in the city. <laughs> and you, I mean, if you don't live in Santa Monica, you're done for. Yeah. It's, yeah. uh, it's not as pretty out no, here in Los Angeles. No. And when you fly in, you see that thick coat of fog yeah. that you're just coming into. <laughs> just pollution. It's just like yeah. enwraps you completely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, the people, all my friends and family that I, that I left back there. Cause I, I truly, I moved over here when I was 18 alone. Wow. I got my, I've got a two-bedroom apartment, so I can feel quite lonely sometimes. Yeah, what was that like? That's so scary. Yeah, so I mean, that's it was. There was some rough times. I mean, genuinely, there yeah. was uh, to not get too deep. It was quite. It was. That's so tough. There were some people there who like. There was a there was a week there that I had a rough time. It was a week where I didn't speak to someone I knew personally. Wow. Using my voice. I was. I had to go to like Starbucks and get a coffee and come back uh -huh. home and then just hang it there all day. It was a week. Of yeah, that. I was just like, yeah, it was tough. And that was that was before I, I reached out to to Steve and uh, Pat, another one of my friends here, is just like very very close friends of mine, and I, and I count them dearly because it takes friends to make this town worth it. A hundred percent. As someone no. that's worked on the internet, I yeah. can I like relate to that wholeheartedly right. that yeah there's times where i'm like oh the only thing i've talked to today is a camera right like this isn't a healthy yeah. situation Which, yeah it gets like that doesn't it because then you i mean you're sitting in your because i 
don't think I had a couch at this point during this week. Okay. So it's just a, like a, a bed and kind of my, my bedroom was made and nothing else. Wow. So I'd sit in a bed all day, which isn't like, that's not <laughs> hey, healthy. Look, that I still you. do that right now. Right. And I have a couch. <laughs> don't hold it. Yeah. Um, which is, yeah, it just kind of makes you, I think sitting in a, in a couch in a, in a couch is kind of more normal human and you can actually, actually kind of have to get dressed and yeah. sit down on the couch. But sitting in bed, you can kind of just sit There's there no reason to nothing. go anywhere else. No. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's very lonely and got like that. And that's, I found a couple of friends in different states that I visit a lot more now. That's cool. just, yeah, it's very nice. What's the weirdest thing about uh, the U.S. to you? What was like that was, because you you got a new car, right? I did get a new, I got a, I hadn't driven on the right side of the road right. forever. Yeah. What, uh, what's that like? Because yeah. I haven't driven, I've been to Australia a couple of times, but I refuse to yeah, drive. I, mean, yeah. I one time tried it once and I was like, nope, I no. forget how everything <laughs> works. I cannot compute right. this. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I had a, uh, at a, at a stick car, which we call mm-hmm. manual cars. But yeah. That's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> had a stick back in Australia. Uh-huh. Uh, so that was kind of, it was easy to go from, at least I didn't have to go s- full extreme in Australia to right. full extreme driving stick on the right side of the road here. Oof, I have yeah. an automatic car here and it's, and it's lovely. Wonderful. <laughs> I put the cruise control on and sit there. <laughs> it's fine. I don't, I don't need to focus on what side of the road I'm on. It's fine. That's great. But um, yeah, no, it's it was tough. I, I failed my first driving test because I, I didn't take any lessons. Oh, my first well, lesson. <laughs> it's probably yeah. it. I, I was like, I can do it. False confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, Give me it. the car. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> but I, um, I, my first lesson was on the way to I like hired a hired that kind of lesson to take you to yeah. the driving test and then they do the test and they drive you home oh I don't know that this service exists yeah it's, it's kind of it is, it, it's a driving test but instead of okay. driving around your area they drive from your home to the uh driving test facility, place, facility yeah. yeah um so I did that that was my first time driving on the right side of the road was driving to my driving test <laughs> so of course I failed <laughs> I was trying to, that's the the hardest thing about driving on this side is basically all the rules is when you're driving, when you turn left at a, at a light, yeah, you can pull ahead when the when light goes green, yeah, and then turn left, yeah. In Australia, that's illegal because you have to you have to wait behind that line until it's safe to go. Oh, yeah, is, here uh, you can creep. You, you creep into the middle of a fucking intersection. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any it's sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So I didn't. I did that the first time because I knew that was kind of a rule. So yeah. I did that during my test. It was the first left turn I had to do. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. And I was about to pull out and she was like, car. I was like, okay, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. And I pulled out. I was about to pull out and she was like, pedestrian. I was like, okay, you saw I failed, have I? Yeah. She was like, yes, you have. <laughs> oh, no. But yeah, so I passed my second time though. And I'd only done those two tests, two lessons before that. So I'm, I'm, I'm a I bit think proud of myself. I, I believe in you. Yeah. I mean, I if you tried to make me take a driving test right now, I would guarantee Of course. Fail. No, I couldn't. I'd fail right now, even yeah. though I've been driving for nine months now or whatever. Uh, don't yeah. say that out loud. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, no. <laughs> okay, we're going to take one last break. When we get back, we got all these Twitter questions cool. for you. We'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. The holidays are coming, and that means a lot of new stuff will be piling up under the tree. So why not make some space for it all by selling the stuff you don't use anymore on Mercari? Mercari is the selling app that makes selling your stuff fast and easy. Just go through your home and find all that good stuff that you don't use anymore, like the phone in that drawer, or the jeans that you only wore once, or that handbag that's hiding behind the other stuff you don't use. You take a few pics, you add a description, and boom, your item is connected to millions of buyers. It's super easy. Mercari even emails you a shipping label when it sells. You can even use Mercari to buy gifts too with millions of sellers. You never know what treasures you'll find. The app has over 500,000 reviews on the App Store with an average 4.8 star rating. So why not give it a try? Finally, an app that makes you money. Check out Mercari and lighten this load this holiday season. That's M E R C. A R I Mercari, the selling app. Not, not too deep. As the creators of Clean Beauty, Bare Minerals is driven by a philosophy that makeup and skincare should make your skin better, not just better looking. That's why their best selling original foundation is made with only five ingredients, all minerals. What a shock. For Bare Minerals to be clean without compromise means good for skin formulas with proven performance. Upgrade to clean beauty products. Use the foundation finder at bareminerals.com to find your perfect match and get 20% off when you use the promo code not too deep. Bare Minerals, the power of good. 
Okay, Nick, you know what I'm about to ask you. The two questions that I ask every I single do. guest that is on the podcast. And the first question is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? That's a fascinating thing is that I knew, I've known from when I was 15 listening to this podcast, I was like, oh, I better have an answer for this one time I'm on Not Too Deep. And I don't have an answer. Um, let me think. Uh, cold spaghetti... Because I've always thought, I mean, a lot of people can, they construe it as either positive or negative. Right. It's very, it's very uh, subjective. And it also can change day to day. Like this can be your answer for today, but you might have a different answer tomorrow. Right. Um, uh, <laughs> Justin Trudeau. Oh, okay. Because of his whole, uh, he did a he did a racist thing back, oh, way back when. So I was just like, I, it'd, it'd be more like a instead I of like a, a instead of like a hit, it'd be kind of just like, oh, you silly fuck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would yeah, that'd be a very like a uh, you're protesting right. and not agreeing with no, him, but you're not like, harming him. No, he's like, oh no, that's <laughs> fair. I think. It's like, no, you know, I get that. Uh, thank you very much. Because he's, he's Canadian. He thanked me right. for throwing his cold spaghetti yeah, in his face. Yeah, he would be very appreciative yes. of, uh, of the opportunity to be on the receiving end of the spaghetti. <laughs> right. um, okay, the other question is to tell us your worst pants shitting story. You can only use three words or re- three small phrases. Mine, mm-hmm. college, jogging, front lawn. Right, which is a great one. Yeah. Um, it should be updated. Like, there has to be. I is, think, there, is there a more recent one? It can do it probably, right now. Probably, but I have. I think I keep burying them down. This is just my go-to. I like, like maybe right. my bowels are just so terrible all the time that nothing stands out <laughs> as a terrible experience anymore. I'm just right. like, this is par for the course now. Right. Um, I know my story. Okay. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> I know the worst one. Uh, um, uh, school. Okay. So like primary school. Okay. So like elementary. Yeah. Primary school. Toilet. That's a good thing. Someone saw. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do they not have doors in Australia? Oh, I wasn't in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, no follow-up questions. <laughs> okay. That's all we need to know. Uh, all right, let's get into these Twitter questions. Okay. First one, do you ever go out of your way for free things, like free samples? Oh, 100%. Yeah? Of course. That's one of the best parts of my job is that I can uh, get free shit. Well, that's I, what I was going to ask. Do people send you weird free shit now because not, of the not franchise? Not really sending. It's kind of just like uh, you get you go to certain events. I was at um, uh, Steve, you know, Steve Zaragoza got yeah. invited to an It's uh, experience kind of thing. Uh huh. Oh yeah, um, he goes all those things. Goes all the things, and it was a while back, and it was r- literally, and I'm not. It's right next to my house. Okay. L- legitimately <laughs> next to my house, like, and I wasn't invited. Offensive. It's the building connecting to my house. <laughs> That's nuts. And I was just like, oh, I, and it, so I, I came by, and I was I was having a drink, and I was I came back home, uh-huh. and I caught him on the way home. So it was a complete happenstance. Yeah. I was like, oh, why are you here? What are you doing? Yeah. He was like, well, I'm going here. I was like, well, I'm going there. <laughs> So what's the, what's here? It's like oh, it's an it thing. I was like, of course it fucking is. <laughs> All I, the places, right? So I can I come, please? <laughs> so I came, and he was like, yeah, sure. And he got there, and Steve was just like, so I only have one plus one, and Alana was there, his girlfriend. Yeah. And uh, but uh, this is Nick Hamilton. <laughs> he's a uh, he's in he's in it. Yeah. And she was like, all right. So like stuff like that, I just kind of gets let funny. into. I mean, even the the it experience, like the big haunted house they had on Sunset yeah. and Vine. Uh, Steve got invited to that and he was like, you want to come? I was like, sure, I wasn't invited. <laughs> so I went. Yeah, maybe hire Steve as your manager I must now. have to now. <laughs> he seems like he's connecting right. you. <laughs> um, but so I went in with Steve and they, they did the same thing. It was like, he's kind of in it. And I was like, all right. <laughs> and then Steve just offered you some hair to make it look like a mullet. Exactly. You, so it's like, do you remember identify? this guy with the mullet? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I got in there and like the director was there and I was like, oh. Hey. Hey, mate. <laughs> I will. Uh, you didn't invite me. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you, mate. No. I got in somehow. <laughs> I got in. I cheated. I cheated my way in. But yeah, stuff like that. I cheat my way into a lot of things. I think that's. I mean, now's the time. Oh, 100 percent. Do it. It'll fade off eventually. <laughs> I need to do it right of now. All yeah. this. Uh, someone wants to know who are you closest with in the It cast. Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, you'd expect it to be one of the bullies. Uh, sure. Because I mean, we're together every day on set. Um. But I probably have to say Wyatt, who plays uh, Stan. Oh, okay. Um, he's he lives in Belly Hills. His mum is like my second mum here. Oh, that's full sweet. Uh, I, yeah, I used to 
when I came here for like weeks at a time, I'd stay in the guest house and they're just the very, very nice human beings. Um, but yeah, so White, White has helped me out with a lot of sort of auditions and he's just a very kind, genuine human being. That's um, real sweet. And we have, I mean, uh, there's plenty of interviews that we've said about each other. It was just like... Um, it was uh, it was doing build the build series yeah. in New York, and uh, it was they were just like, oh yeah, uh, and the guy who plays Henry Bowers is, is staying at Wyatt's house right now. And the interviewer was just like, um, oh, what do you what do you want to say to Nick Nick right now? And yeah. he looked at the camera, he's like, get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sweet. He's a legend. No, I love him so much. Uh, okay, someone says, tell us a funny story about your adorable dog, Nick. Oh, a funny story. I mean, she seems like she's probably just cute all the she's time. Just, she literally, she does nothing wrong. I wish there was. She was, uh, there was one time, which probably get me in trouble with Peter or something, but I, um, I, we had to get a, um, a passport, um, like I went to passport office for something mm -hmm. and then I, I came back and the passport office took way longer than I expected. Yeah. So she'd done multiple defecations on, on everything. <laughs> But like stuff like that, she doesn't even. She did that once, and she was looking at me. She's like, "I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I just had to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I couldn't stop it." No, Goose has done that too. Like she punishes herself more than I ever yeah. could for that situation. And it's like understandable, but it's like their their ability to emote. I'm so sorry. I was like, I didn't mean to. I just, it just had to come out. I'm it's, sorry. There was no other option. No, no other option. You but, weren't here. Yeah. So she hasn't. She hasn't done it since. And I've left her for like. A, so I leave her. I mean, I, I do a lot of auditions and stuff. Yeah, so she's, yeah. she's at home alone for two hours at a time, and she still doesn't do anything she's there's Ugh. literally no crazy stories there's more like just cute videos and yeah. stuff that I'll, I'll tweet at some point i'm sure she looks like a great little sweetheart mm -hmm. what's your do you do any sort of like pump up for auditions like do you listen to any sort of specific songs do you do any like routines you know what i try to do is and this just goes for life as well as auditions yeah. but i um whatever i want to be whatever i want to sort of showcase if it's a comedy audition mm -hmm. in uh in the audition or if it's a I go to meet some friends like the Valley Folk and I want to be funny in front of them. Yeah. I listen to uh, stand up and oh. I watch stand up and stuff on like the Uber drive there or whatever. Cool. And for some reason I've got a mind that kind of just whatever I'm around it molds to. Yeah. You take is, it on. Which is great. Like that's, I was, uh, I was going on a first date here um, uh -huh. one time and I, I, it was one of my best first dates because I watched some stand ups beforehand. <laughs> and you're like, I'm was, so charming I'm right so now. I'm so charming. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's just like, uh, and if I do a, um, if I have like a really dramatic movie uh, audition the next day or like that that day, then I, I try and do some stuff that sort of makes me calm. And yeah. I, I don't really have a routine. It's just kind of whatever is calm. If I surround myself with that, I'll be calm. That's good. That's yeah. more than I do. I just <laughs> fucking wail to some jock jams and right. probably induces my anxiety Great. before Perfect. an audition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Someone's asking, which movie would be better if we added Pennywise in it? Oh, Schindler's List. Um. Oh, this, is, this is oddly in the last like two times we've been podcasting, Schindler's List has come oh, up. Oh, shit. What? <laughs> A couple That's fantastic. times. Um, uh, what, uh, I want to see Pennywise actually be funny. I want him to. I want to see him like a in like an Amy Poehler, Tina Fey kind oh, of. Oh, like a, yeah, that'd, that'd be, be funny. And he, he just comes. He just. Oh my god, that's funny. He just I, comes up. I mean, I in that vein, I would love to see Pennywise and Mean Girls. I oh, think. so great! That he'd be a fantastic be, Mean Girl. I mean, he'd be the meanest girl. He would be the meanest girl. He'd be the psychopathic murderer. Yeah. They'd be like, "You meaner today, Pennywise." Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen that Pennywise kind of? <laughs> it would be, he, he's a bit mean. Uh, I <laughs> would love it. Uh, okay, someone's asking what projects do you have coming up? Oh, good. I have. Uh, a They're couple asking things. also if you're taking a break or not. No, I well, I do a lot of. I try to keep as busy as I can. Otherwise, you get lonely and depressed. Of course. So uh, you, I, I, I'm trying to do movies and TVs right now, but also delving into kind of music and. Yeah. But oh, I, cool. Um, so I. Got a, a a movie next year that I'm shooting in May in Philly. Cool. Uh, got Danger Close that comes out in November on November eighth here. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I'm also going to New York to uh, record some stuff in the near future. To record music, some music stuff. stuff. Yeah, Whoa. yeah. So that's fun. That's like always been my dream. Original music yeah. stuff. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's always whenever I when I when I came here, it was always like whenever I go to LA. Whenever I move there, within that first year, I need to have recorded something just so I can have that. That's my main goal. Like, cool. I, of course, getting roles and jobs is a good thing. And if, say, if I got four things to this week, this year and yeah. couldn't do music, I'd be happy. But 
my schedule this year has allowed me to focus a lot on on originals and I have an EP sort of set out that I can... What Can you tell us what sort of like what's the style that you're it's, leaning towards? Have you heard of uh, Jeremy Zucker? Nope. He's uh, is like a very kind of acoustic, uh, very chill music, but it's, it's kind of that mixed with kind of very kind of Billie Eilish kind of cool minor tones. Um, so it's a bit sad, uh, but it's also very acoustic and kind of uplifting but sad lyric it's like it's all yeah it's great just, yeah I'm, i can't wait i mean we all want to feel sad and we all want to indulge exactly. in that Isn't everyone that, has to right that's how adele and lana del rey made the right. that's their whole jam yeah something like that but i'm very excited that's that should be something that happens soon uh possibly in the next month that i head over to new york and record stuff so just so i can Sweet. have it in my back pocket and release it whenever i want oh that's so exciting yeah, yeah. okay last question okay He's such a squishy baby boy. <laughs> did he <laughs> did he have to work with anyone to make those angry Henry faces and American accent be so believable, or is that just raw Nick talent? Could you imagine if there was someone that's uh if if there's a psychopath in a movie, it's just like I'll call on the psychopath fake ma- face maker. Yeah. <laughs> He comes on stage. He's like, so this is how you make this face. Just watch me do what I do. (laughs) Just mirror me. Um, No, I I worked with uh, an accent coach on my first American movie. Okay. um, And then very slightly on it. But by that point, I'd done what it was 2017, 2016 when we shot. So I'd been doing American auditions for four years at that point. Dang. So it kind of, kind of just... At that point, you've been working on at it. At this point, it's kind of natural. It's just you, yeah. You, when I first met you, it. you were like, "I'm Australian." I was like, "I haven't heard it." You were like, "I'm masking it right yeah, now." Yeah, I fake and it. I, I like, fake it all what? the time. Otherwise, people don't know what I'm saying. I've there been needs to be subtitles had. on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Audio exactly. subtitles. <laughs> okay. Actual last question: mm-hmm. Do you miss the mullet? Hundred percent. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's a dirty old rag of smelliness. <laughs> How did they not, as a rap present, give you a little I, mullet? I so wanted it. Apparently, oh. it's in like the Smithsonian now. Or Here's know. hoping. <laughs> Nick, but, this is um, uh, no. Yeah. Wait, so are you going to dabble with uh, some hair situations? I want to. I mean, uh, this movie that I got coming up is a. Uh, I play a real guy, and back when the movie is a set, real guy, a wait. real person. Oh, a person a that exists. In, okay, I was like, uh, a real, <laughs> you don't play a toy. <laughs> I play a real boy. Yeah. Um, but he had a mullet when, like, the events of the movie were happening. Oh, God. <laughs> so I was just like, don't please, please don't put me in a mullet again. <laughs> You're going to be typecast now. you going to be typecast to just mullets. I, I mean, not the worst thing in the no, world. of course not. Um, Nick, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for Before having me. Before you go, everyone that is a guest and makes time for us Ooh. gets a personalized fortune cookie. Oh, fantastic. From us to them, so you can take a little peek at what's inside. Oh. I think it's in there. Can you imagine if there's nothing in there? <laughs> yeah. Love so hard. Here we go. Um, it's a fortune. I honestly forget what this one is. Uh, Nicholas Hamilton equals a beautiful girl. Direct quote from you. That is true. Is that from you? Yeah, I did a, um, <laughs> I did a, <laughs> I did one of the, you know, those um, whisper challenges. Yeah. Where you put headphones on, and yeah. So there was a, the guy who said, uh, he said, I'm Nicholas Hamilton. I uh-huh. said, I'm a beautiful girl. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you said, right? It's a perfect. But yeah, that's little... one of my memes now, which is great. Oh, I love yeah. it. Okay, where can people find you and everything you're doing if they don't already know? Uh, Nicholas.Hamilton on Instagram, I believe, and Nick underscore Hamilton with a no K on Nick because that's incorrect. There we go. Uh, Nick <laughs> underscore Hamilton on Twitter and watch out for some music. That'll come soon, I'm sure. <laughs> that's so exciting. Go watch it too. Go watch it too. Yeah. If it's still in theaters. It and it too. All of it. Yeah. Uh, all of it. Yeah. Uh, thank you again. This was thank super you. fun. We'll see you guys next time. Another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep, too deep, too deep, too deep, too deep, too deep, 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 too deep. deep. not too not deep. deep. It's Grace Helbig. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer Melissa D. Montz, camera operator Katrina Henning, edited by Shireen Lani Yunus, post production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. Mm-hmm.